I think that philosophy is in a way the search for the global optimum of the modeling function. So uh, it has uh, fields that have been defined as parts of questions that lead to this modeling function, like epistemology, what can be known, what, what is the nature of truth, and so on. Ontology, what is the stuff that exists, right? What's, what's going on there? Metaphysics, this is, uh, in some sense, uh, the systems in which we have to describe things. And ethics, what should we do? And at some point, we discovered epistemology. So my view, the first rule of epistemology is roughly discovered by Francis Bacon in 1620. It says that the strengths of your confidence in a belief must equal the weight of the evidence in support of it. And you need to apply this recursively until basically you resolve the priors of every belief and the belief system becomes self-contained. To believe stops being a verb. There is no more relationship to identifications that you just arbitrarily set. This is just a system that is in itself contained, which means in some sense it's a mathematical system, an axiomatic system that uh, describes a certain thing. And this leads you to the nature of mathematics. And mathematics, it turns out, is the domain of all languages, all of them, not just the natural languages. And mathematicians have been trying to fix their understanding of the languages, and they noticed what mathematics is in this regard. And Hilbert uh, stumbled on Cantor's uh, set theoretic uh, experiments to deal with natural numbers, and then uh, saw that when you go to infinity, very awkward and nasty things happen. Your axiomatic systems basically start blowing up, and uh, the total set suddenly contains both itself and the set of all of its subsets, so it cannot have the same number of members as itself. And he asked mathematicians, please build us an uh, interpreter for mathematics, in mathematics, basically something like a computer made for mathematics, any mathematics you want, that can run all of mathematics. And then Gödel and Turing came along and showed that this is not possible, that this computer is going to crash. And this left mathematics with a big shock. And in a way, mathematics is still reeling from that shock. And then uh, Turing uh, in church had another insight, and they figured out that all the universal computers have the same power. Right? The universal computer is a set of rules that by applying them, you can compute all the things that can be computed. And the set contains itself. So universal computer is computable. As long as your universal computer doesn't run out of resources, it can compute anything that you can compute. And it can also compute all the other universal computers. So the next thing that they discovered, Turing was involved again, uh, was that our mind is probably in the class of the universal computers not in the class of mathematical systems. So this is what Penrose doesn't know. Penrose thinks that our mind is mathematical, that it can do things that a computer cannot do. And the uh, big hypothesis of AI in a way is, we are in the class of systems that can do, uh, approximate computable functions and only those. And so we cannot do more than a computer, which means that all the mathematics that we've ever seen and all the mathematics that we will ever see and that will ever matter is going to be computable. And the fact uh, that some mathematics is not computable is the problem of the language that we have been using. We need computational languages, not mathematical languages. And it turns out that the main problem is that mathematics, classical mathematics, defines functions in uh, using infinities, which means infinitely many steps to get to the result. And these functions tend not to be computable. So uh, if you are a computer programmer, you, it would never occur to you to write in your spec that is totally fine if your routine does return the result after infinitely many steps only, right? This is not good. You want a finite set of steps and uh, one that you know how long it is. Uh, so your customer gets a result in time, right? So in this perspective, should you define numbers in such a way that pi is a number? You cannot know the last digit of pi. Pi is a function clearly, right? It's a function right. that gives you as many digits as you can afford. And in any finite universe, it's only going to give you a finite number of of bits. Uh, 